All right, that cut off a little quick. We are live, and hello, hello. We have Luke. We have Dutch Sense. We are live. We... Hello, hello. You got such a How's good voice. Dutch. Oh, I, hey, thank you. Thank you, yeah, guys. Just so everybody knows, this is not pre-recorded. The time now is... <laughs> the time I now is 12:40 p.m. Central Time. This man's <laughs> life that he will never get back, but uh, it's because uh, it's been a long time coming, and we are finally here. We have gotten to know each other a little bit, discussed the theories, discussed the discoveries, the star forts, uh, the symmetries in the uh, terraformed structure of our reality uh and then the cycles of energies that uh you have been forecasting working on for a very long time uh dutch and then luke stepping up here uh ancient historia like killing it with the um gog magog looking into what actually is Tartaria in Eastern like Siberia? One of the people here and say I turned up uninvited, just to just to no. Answer. You were you no no. To, you were invited, and you were. It was posted in a link with like a good twenty of like uh, the top alternative history content producers, and the new new kid on the block steps up, killing it. Two legends right now uh i guess hey i'm honored i'm honored to be on with both of you uh glad to have this catastrophic uh multi-disaster happening right now is there anywhere on alert for an upcoming uh high earthquake dutch or how how is the cycle right now yes actually we are where we've got a warning going right now for three more days um, for South America on the uh, north side of South America, right next to Colombia, uh, right where Central America meets into South America. So it, we're looking for up to, it could be a big earthquake. It could, it's based upon the deep earthquake. We had a deep earthquake that happened 10 days ago. And down below the area, a shift basically took place. And we're going to look for, and we watch for up to 14 days on big deep earthquakes. And we're getting down to the end of the watch. We have three more days to go in South America. And it's right in the area where we're looking. It's gone what I call quiet, radio silent. It's gone. Well, actually, hold on. A new five. <laughs> a new five just hit over east of there. Anyway, um, we're looking at the north part of South America for up to 7.8 by the end of Tuesday night. All and, right. Yeah, so it so, should hit. I mean, those, the chances are pretty high. No, sorry, Dutch. We're going to pause you right there. And then for those that don't know, that is Dutch impromptu just explaining and giving his regular uh, earthquake uh, forecast for specific areas of the world as uh, he has always done as if like uh, a regular is basically a regular weather channel, but for these predictions and... Um, I, what, I didn't have what he was describing accurately on the screen um, for that, but that is what you do on the regular, and it's like no other. Um, I'm going to shut up and let you explain yourself a little bit more. Oh, you no, know, you're awesome. You're awesome. Guys, just so you know, um, we were talking, we've been talking for a few hours, and he showed me his whole laboratory as well as several other things that are uh, kind of behind him and so forth, uh, Bernie there. And I just want to say that it's just, um, it, it's really cool to be able to interact with you guys like this because I don't normally get to get on and talk about earthquakes live except for on my stream. And so, for instance, with the, with the deep earthquake that I'm talking about, everybody can just imagine in their mind's eye they can imagine somebody lifting on the underside of a big piece of stone. And whether it's round or flat or disc or whatever, that when you lift on the underside of something and if it's got cracks up through it, you can understand that 
the pressure goes to those cracks that are in whatever you're lifting on. And in this case, something is lifting on the underside of South America right now that's coming up through the plate and it's going to hit Sorry. right as it comes up through the plate. It hits up at the top and that's where the break happens. And that's when we get a big earthquake. And what's led me into interacting with Bernie and so forth, guys, just so you don't, if you don't know, a series of earthquakes. How can I put this easily? There's a series of earthquakes have started striking below certain things that you may have heard about before, like what people call star forts, small ones, star forts, bastion forts that like skeptics would talk about as being just like with cannons on top, all the way up to structures that are the size 300 miles or more long structures that I've found on either side. Like, for instance, I found three huge 300 mile long star forts in the United States that make up the whole West Coast of the United States, a thousand miles long total. It's indisputable that they're in the shape of star forts. But what I found is disturbing. In the middle of each one of them is a military base that's been built. Vandenberg Air Force Base in the middle of one of them where we do space launches from, from the pinnacle tip of it. Edwards Air Force Base, where we launch our nuclear bombers from. On the side of it is Area 51 of all places and our nuclear test sites. On the other side of it is 29 Palms Marine Bombing Range. That's just one of them. Another one I found has face, Facebook Data Center is built in the middle of one of the 300-mile-long star forts on the West Coast. It's deliberately right in the middle of the pinnacle tip, right where Vandenberg is down in California in its star fort. And there's earthquakes striking below each one. That's how I found this stuff. And I, it, I was already looking into mud flood. I was already looking into other stuff. But when I started to find the earthquakes below this, this is where I then started to look at your guys' channels. And then, of course, a whole series of other things have been discovered and so forth. I hate to get so serious, man. But like, this is how I found these guys. And so we're going to be talking about a lot of this stuff, I think. I'm going to show it and so forth, what I found, and the, the Star Forks 300 miles right. long. And it's not, Data Center. We'll it's all like, that. sorry, I'm, I'm scrolling through all of, like, you got so many of your own live streams uh, going over of literally uh, the points showing every single live recorded earthquakes that happen throughout uh, each day and the cycles of it all, the magnitudes. And uh, it's just an epic amount of proportion of work that uh, for those that do know you, you're 600,000 on uh, YouTube and uh, 50,000 on Twitch right now. Uh, it should be in the millions if uh, we weren't all so shadow bound. But uh, regardless, uh, trying to find the one where you were doing the showing the uh, star fort measurements across North America these alignments of these 300 miles of these giant terraformed uh, structures um, that you found. And then like you've connected them with some of these old star fort maps that we've been looking into, for instance, of like St. Louis there. And when it was in the city was a, a actual star city with the star fort in it. And that uh, you found uh, modern day today, like a bunch of us, uh, in the community there's been a few videos done of it this water tower and that's left over in the, the old st louis in the center of it and that uh it's just this giant romanesque huge tower this feels bring up a picture of that tower yeah um i didn't I, have it on guess what they're building there now guess people. what they're building there now I at that tower find it. They are building the new United States Geospatial Agency that does all the LIDAR mapping for the whole world. They're building it right there at that tower, right? Like just on that block. Wow. I was going to ask. So Dutch, U.S. government took it all over. What do you think the, um, the end of this is? Not the end, but, you know, the, the result of all these earthquakes. What, what do you presume is going to happen? Well, on the earthquake angle, like, for instance, with the earthquakes next to the star forts and at the pinnacle tips of each one of these things, um, it's it's got to be some kind of very low frequency or lower, ultra low frequency or extremely low frequency, hence the 300 miles long. And that 
but with the earthquakes in general, that there's actually a, there's, <laughs> nobody's going to believe this. I've showed this in a video, but I will show it again when we, when we do another longer live. Um, starting yeah. off the tip of Antarctica, there's the tower. Yeah, there's the tower. Yeah, this one right here is the tower. I'm not going to play it because I don't know the video. I don't want to get copyright strikes. Wait, wait, wait. Um, yeah, and for just a little what's going on, we are live on Autodidactic on Andreas Sirtis, uh, my Burn Eye channel, my Crypto Alchemist, uh, and on my tw uh, Twitch, Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook. And uh, next time we'll also be live on uh, your Twitch uh, where you constantly have uh, your model running your active uh, uh, forecasting measurement or live. Uh, uh, yeah, the, right the G right. word. It's the G word. It's um, it's the forbidden globe word. But now, hey, that, you know what? I could address it right now, actually, just so because I know our audience overlap sure. and that there's people that, you know, Absolutely. are all over the board and they want to know where I stand and we can just uh, bury the hatchet right now. Um, and I was joking about it earlier, but I can stand by it. I think I could pre pre present evidence to show it that Earth 100%. Is Actually, I got to pause you one sec. Right before you start, <laughs> I have an announcement to make. Uh, to, I, I officially am a trash can earther. It is both flat and round, and it is also the hypercube, essentially. <laughs> and now he, he beat me to the punch. He beat me to the punch that Earth is flat all the way around. And that I think I could prove this that there's that it think of a diamond, think of a princess cut diamond. Okay. Now I, I can't prove this visually yet with some kind of thing launched into supposed space, but that the continents themselves, guys, that we can take and fold Earth like a piece of origami. And that we'll find that Earth is faceted like a jewel, almost like a like a floating jewel in space or whatever. That it's that it comes to points, not like a coronavirus or something. I hate to say the c word and get you banned, but like a like a diamond or something, uh, like a, like Princess Cut Diamond, and that there would be sections of Earth that are flat and other sections that are round, but that it comes to points and the, the continents, guys. Okay. What I, what I was going to tell you, and, and there's no easy way to tell you this, earthquakes are striking down below the pinnacle tip of each continent. And what I found is that each continent, like, for instance, Antarctica. When you look at Antarctica, you see the ice shape and stuff, but you have to zoom out to see the plate boundaries. That Antarctica itself is in the shape of a pentagonal star fort, the entire continent, the entire outside edge of, of Antarctica. But to see it, you have to back Earth out about a planet away to see it. I found it by the earthquakes striking below the tip of Antarctica and it spreads to the next plate and the next plate, which burn burn. You've seen my video showing those plates and that the earthquakes are spreading from plate to plate to plate. It's got to be some oh, yeah. kind of wireless power that's going from plate to plate to plate. Right. It's got to be. You said something there like, um, that just made me think of something, which is that it's like we were talking before the stream. Like, I think everything is more complex than we imagine we're simple right so this is just my opinion on it and i'm not judging anyone that has a different opinion because yeah. we're all talking about things that are you know are, are nuts in the face of of the consensus so it doesn't really matter what shape we think the earth is but i think that there's like this element of complexity which increases so whatever we imagine it's something we can't imagine. So arguing over, over whether it's round or flat or whatever, like you say, when it comes to something that is round or the that is flat, sorry, all the way round, like here's the, the thing: thing. there's no sense of ever arguing because both models literally physically work, and now there's like an equal or large enough portions percentage of consciousness uh believing and existing in each model and that like they both all simultaneously do can't be proven wrong and do coexist each other it's like I, I think that's it's just really senseless cool. and except the multiverse well this is what i mean about complexity so for example we imagine it as either you know round or flat 
But as we were talking before the stream, what about this notion of it being something, you know, uh, something further, like a hypersphere with multiple dimensions? So we perceive it as a 3D object when it's actually something much more. Well, if you expand upon that theory, the idea that we live on some kind of simplistic plane in itself is erroneous because we know uh, even from science itself if we look at things like the double slit experiment we have evidence that consciousness affects reality so if you guys don't know the double slit experiment is they fire a photon through a sheet when nobody's looking and uh, it, it behaves like a wave but then when they put it some kind of camera to record the action it behaves as a particle now that same yeah. principle, that same principle could be uh, affected to you because if you look at a game you guys might have seen before um a view of a game from above so what the character views is loaded but what the character can't view isn't so whilst you're looking forward you see all these trees and buildings but everything behind you is is not there until you turn around and then it's loaded well reality is kind of the same so when you're not observing it it doesn't necessarily behave in the same way as when you do observe it so oh, this is a, a, a well-established scientific fact, right? Yeah, this image right here. Yeah. I, I got this right here is supposedly uh, an image captured of the electron uh, movement of a hydrogen around a hydrogen atom or photon or electron cloud of a hydrogen atom, like sacred geometry it's just higher dimensional geometric uh you, you know i noticed in that picture around the outside edge of the sphere of that do you see the do you see okay look at the top left hand side of there or the far left hand side it's like um, do, holes, isn't it okay do you, do you see the overlapping spiral nature of that okay that same pattern is something yeah. that you have drawn and we were looking at on one of your t-shirts, which is, I'm not getting mystical. I'm not getting a cult. I'm getting scientific and just with cymatics that the shape that you just showed is, oh, there it is on a shirt right there. Okay, this is the famous flower of life. And the flower of life this is, is decorated across the of life uh, with, this, with this amount. And I call this design the weed of life. Because uh, <laughs> it is the seed of life yeah. and yeah <laughs> i have any merchandise right it, it's across about? every ancient egyptian um every ancient egyptian tomb is painted with the flower of life but that's that you see that all the way down at that microcosmic level down at the level of the supposed picture of the what was that a hydrogen is that what you said hydrogen yeah i believe that's a atomic hydrogen the electron cloud of an electron of a atomic hydrogen molecule and this you can see is, the edges of the flower of life on the edges now it goes into a spiral shape which becomes harder to see three-dimensionally in the uh, atom there but right then the, okay so the, this one yeah. here is definitely uh h atom orbitals uh i believe it was the sapphire project that was able to capture these as so like one by one and like one by two like this get as they go through like it's pretty insane how light hydrogen is turning from wave to solid to these geometries of formation i guess and uh, are you familiar with mr fix it rick's work oh yeah he's uh Mr. Fix It Rick Rick hosts the Keshi Foundation uh, Zooms every week. Oh, he does, does he? Oh yeah, he's out there. Okay, old no, video I, I just dropped into the. I dropped a link to you. It's I one of that. his old videos, which he he actually was playing. It, it's the spinning plasma ball experiment. And in the spinning plasma ball experiment, which we can show at a, at a later time, because this video is only supposed to be a few minutes long that when we when I get on and do this longer live with you guys, we will watch that video from Mr. Fix-It Rick, which shows a standard plasma ball spinning, okay? And the plasma ball is filled with gas, and the electrical field inside is creating the tendrils of plasma going out. You put your hands on the outside edge of the plasma ball. Now, when Mr. Fix-It Rick takes that, 
plasma ball and he hooks it up to an actual physical rotating motor going several thousand RPM. Okay. And he brings it up to speed at several thousand RPM. And what happens is something amazing. The tendrils that are normally just going around on the inside of the plasma ball that we would all just put our hands on the outside and would, you know, of course, go to ground and try to seek our hands. Instead, it becomes organized inside of the plasma ball. And it forms its own North Pole, equator, and South Pole, the plasma, as it's rotating. As he rotates it, it brings it into, he didn't call it anything. He didn't name it. I called it hyper oscillation, that he took the already electrically oscillating plasma and then brought it up to speed, 3,000 or 4,000 RPM. And it broke into separate magnetic fields inside of the plasma ball. It's amazing. It's the most amazing video. And I dropped it in chat if you want to go look at it yourself. Or I, I don't think you want to show it on here just because he, we don't have permission to show it. But that it's for your consideration, guys. You should go. It. There it is. I think he'll let us play it because he let me oh. play it on my stream. He, I asked him for permission to play it. And he said, okay. Gonna, I should. Oh, it shared the wrong one. Sorry. Here's the uh, and it breaks please. apart into three separate magnetic there fields inside of the plasma globe. It's amazing. Then it something even more amazing happens that it starts to pulse. And it, it you'll see it as he brings it up to speed. It's, it's one of the more amazing things. It's proof that now what I think if he would have taken this thing and had some kind of scale next to it, we had a one gram weight on it. I think it might even be generating anti-gravity. I think so. I think it would generate anti-gravity, what he's doing. Wait do you see it. It's amazing. Again, the plasma forms into its own North pole, North pole, Equator, and South Pole. By just rotating it fast. What's interesting is that that image that we were talking about before looked like it had, you know, the cymatic pattern looked like it had four poles as opposed to two, didn't it? I had sure did. There it is. Okay. So as he brings it up to speed, it immediately seeks out its own naturally seek naturally. It just forms into its own North pole. Okay. You see it, it goes straight to the top. Then as it goes faster, the tendrils organize, see, see the magnetic field break apart. See it. And it starts to form into a North pole an equator and a South pole. See it. It's literally, you're visualizing the earth's magnetic field, whether it's flat or around. It's the most amazing video. And I shared this a few years ago. And there's all sorts of inventions that come off of this, as well as just proof on things. I that see what you, you're saying right there. Like, look at that. Hyper oscillation, I'm calling it. When you take something that's already electrically oscillating and then physically rotate it fast. So hyper, right? Oscillation. Spinning and then a plasma, well, exactly. You add that to the rotation of, like, the universe. Does that mean that we could be looking at natural versions of these in forms of like stars and stuff oh i think this is what's going on yeah. inside of the quote unquote center of the earth and the center of the sun I, this got to be and i bet you that on a super huge scale it would it would be super hot that it yeah. i mean obviously that's yeah. that's electricity in a, in a you know but, five volts but you know i mean, alone, I, mean uh, I don't want to be really basic about this but we've all slid across carpet as a child you know, we, we know what friction does. Yeah, it's got to produce heat. It has to. And no, then I would imagine this would vaporize yeah. pretty much anything. Not just that spinning against the air itself is going to be creating a shit ton of friction. Yeah, because this is a vacuum. This is That's a vacuum sealed <laughs> uh, neon gas, right? Yeah, yeah, wow. Fucking hell. Well, that just shows then, doesn't it? You can So see when you rotate a plasma at a certain RPM... It breaks apart into its own magnetic field and generates north and south pole on its own. Perfect north, obviously, off the tip. And then there's your equator and your tropics. And it's then it's pulsing down to the south pole. Plasma, usually. Do you know so that? awesome. What, what, what was that? I, I didn't hear. What temperature is plasma usually around? Well, see, there's different types of plasma and cold fusion. And uh, the blue purple the uv the cold plasma 
uh, is usually um, around room temperature-ish or like lower, uh, and then your hot infrared, uh, orange, yellow, or orange, reddish, uh, higher density uh, waves and fields go. <laughs> totally, and power to uh, the power behind it would also um you know of course you know you put more voltage and amperage into something it's gonna it can also increase the temperature i would plasmas like ionospheric plasmas from harp for instance and other high frequency radio wave projects can get up into the, uh, the multi hundreds of degree 500 degrees you know and so forth uh 500 fahrenheit like like you know what is that sorry like 400, um... I, I got to pause and interject. Shout out to uh, Ben Ben waking up analogs here in the Zertus chat, uh, which reminds me to bring up the Crystal City in Missouri, uh, Moberly, uh, and Dutch, if you don't uh, know of waking up with analogs, Ben's work, uh, he'd just epic on Twitter on uh, documenting hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, 1800s newspaper articles, publishings of like the giants, the ancient uh, antiquitech all throughout America, um, and covering uh, just epic amounts of stuff. And before we went live, you told the story of Moberly and the Crystal City that's around you. Can you tell it again, please? Oh, yeah. oh, certainly. Hey, you know what? This is going to be a, a fun little uh, little thing here. Okay. In Missouri, there's a place called Moberly, Missouri. And back in the 1800s, I don't know what year in the 1800s, but certainly it was in the 1800s. Um, the New York Times ran a story in April of that year. It wasn't April 1st, so it wasn't technically an April Fool's joke or anything. Claiming at the bottom of a coal mine in Moberly, which there is... A, a, well, there are a series of coal mines in around Moberly that they were down several hundred feet in a shaft and they broke through a wall and they found a hidden underground city that was huge and it was crafted they said for giants and the story ran in the New York Times in April of whatever year 1800 they then came out and retracted the story and said it was a hoax they didn't call it an April Fool's joke because April Fool's jokes didn't exist at the time really so they retracted it and called it a hoax. And just now we retracted it some way, somehow, like all of the story. Sorry, I just got to put this one part in of how it literally every story, including the Kincaid uh, Grand Canyon uh, pyramid complex. And uh, this is Isis Temple Pyramid there. And this picture still has the giant cave opening in the center. Uh, it's now actually walled up the U.S some government agency walled that up in the middle of uh, these random badlands. No, no inner city to see there. Anywho, uh, back to the crystal city that's supposedly you, around you. Before you continue, I'd just like to bring up the fact that what we were talking about, about Britain apparently being built by giants. So there is a few things that, that correlate with this which are great. So when I was researching the comet in one of my videos, you might have watched it, I'm not sure, but um, there was some Anglo-Saxon poetry that talked. And when this comet struck, they, they, they wrote specifically, the work of giants lay in ruin. And, you know, the people that could have rebuilt it were dead, right? And um, if you look, there was a two pound coin in Britain that had written on it, standing on the shoulders of giants. You might have seen Paul Cook talking about how the cliffs of Dover themselves look like they are degraded limestone blocks that have turned into this material over time. Well, you correlate all this together. You've got Gog Magog, the last giant, when Brutus apparently came into Britain. Uh, that Britain was controlled by giants and Gog Magog was the last one that Brutus slayed. Welsh folklore will talk about Brit uh, giants in Britain. And if you look up the uh, Giant's Causeway in Ireland, You've got these huge structures that they literally call the Giant's Causeway because it's it's incredible. So I think this correlation, and in fact, you know, there is an even bigger one, which you might have heard of the Bible with the Nephilim, the way that um, angels mated with man and created a race of giants, right? 
Well, what is England called? Engel land. Engel is the Saxon for angel. Angel land, land of the angels. That that is, uh, guys. You're. We're gonna when we do the next live, and this is something for other people to tune into. We'll be able to show that I, what I found is that England itself, the UK, uh, Great Britain, no, and Ireland are well. Every single continent, Paul Cook might be not. It might be Paul Cook is right. The plates have been somehow Shut up, Paul. Shut up, made. Paul. Yeah, I heard he had some blueberry. I, I I heard he had some blueberry. I need to meet up with him. Um. Now, I'm serious, serious, guys, that I will show what I feel to be, and I've already showed it in the video, so it's already gotten me in big trouble, undeniable proof that each plate, each plate now, including, including UK on the side, has been manufactured or made somehow cymatically, maybe, I think. I don't know how they, I don't know how they did it, but right. that... That they were able to somehow raise the plates up in layers or create it somehow with geopolymer or other, and that right, right. There are earthquakes striking well, down below that? the tips of yeah. each one of them. Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt you. You've got that. You said it there, right? Plates, <laughs> plates. So if you watch cymatics, you know when they put sand on a plate attached to a speaker, and they watch the way it changes. Imagine if you did that with wet cement. OK, something that's going to move into position and then when you leave it, it will set. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that happens with mud. We see an earthquake makes the mud turn to, to liquid. And then when the vibrations stop, it sets in position. So if you were to have a vibration under the plates that we live on, you would create a series of cymatic patterns all over that entire plate. You're absolutely right, and that's exactly what we're finding. And there's a military base built in the middle of each one, which means somebody knows. Oh, and a Facebook data center, which we'll talk about show at some point. Real quick, I'll wrap up the Moberly story. The Moberly thing, they were down at the bottom of this coal, coal mine here in central Missouri, and they found this city that was built by giants. And in the story, it talks about people with elongated skulls found wrapped up curled up in cocoon shape or it, what I would imagine to be like kind of, you know, huddled up or something like that. Anyway, my wife doing separate research on horticulture, trying to find Missouri native plant pictures to print out for our decorations in our house, found in the Missouri Historical Society two weeks ago, which I'm going to show in a video. It's on her laptop now and we will show it when we go live. They, there used to be painters, expert painters that would do what were called panorama pictures and they would paint starting at the head of the Mississippi waters all the way up in like all the way up north in the north United States and ride a small raft all the way down to New Orleans and paint the entire landscape along the way. And then that would be in a huge roll that they would take around and sell people to watch roll by in what they called panorama moving pictures, but not like mo movies like just this thing would scroll by basically and show you landscape pictures. Anyway, my wife found this thing two weeks ago where it starts here in Missouri on the Missouri River and heads north by northwest up towards the northwest United States. And as they're going at the start of the panorama, there's a cave scene that's been very detailed painted of five guys walking through a cave and the cave is huge. And there's all kinds of giant crystals growing out of the size of the cave, which we now know is Crystal City, Missouri, and the Crystal Cave that's here, which is just south and next to Moberly, Missouri, where they found the giant city underground, supposedly, but they called it a hoax. Anyway, in this painting, it's undeniable. The guys are holding lanterns. Sorry, I couldn't. I was failing miserably at trying to get... Oh, Sorry. you're fine. You're fine. On there. In the cave uh, painting, there are elongated skull skeleton mummies painted by this artist who went into the cave system with the explorers who went and they, and there's a whole detailed description of what they discovered and what they discovered were a series of mummies that, and they're painted as being taller than the guys. They got the English guys, they're holding lanterns. Here's the mummies next to them. Each one's got a super elongated skull and they have to be at least 10 or 15 feet tall guys, each one. 
And they're, they're, it's painted out, and it's in a panorama picture that was taken all over the United States and shown as what they discovered on the, on the voyage northwest. And it was a guy tied with Lewis and Clark who, who was doing the exploration. So it, it, it's official. It's not like it's just some fancy full painting. This was shown, and it, it might even, it's in the Missouri Museum now. And I'll, I have links to it. I will get to it. We'll show it live. But what it proves is Moberly. Do you have any the time? original story in Moberly about the elongated skulls and the tall people that they found and the crystals because the two are right next to each other. And then that proves giant people were here. And that okay. means we already know this. So anyway, <laughs> it's pretty intense. Like, right? Like literally there's like hundreds, thousands of giant stories, pyramid stories, burials of these elongated skulls. Uh, like it's this, these reset, uh, long lost higher civilization on like mega macro scale. Like the work you found Dutch of like, literally like, uh, we got to do an in-depth one on Guang Peng Dong or whatever that one is. And like, um, it's like just a giant Pentagon, giant star fort Island in the middle of of uh micronesia macronesia or something it's like yeah yeah on the side of um on micronesia they named a uh nan medal was the name of the place nan, yeah yeah so that's like the little city that's officially like really old and like built from basalt from like the ocean up by man somehow megalithic out of the sea like no wait, different wait, wait, saudi wait, arabia wait, wait. building everybody hold up days. hold up hold up stop the train because one week, I want to say it was one week after you made the video, you guys started talking about Nan Madal, the National Weather Service and the international weather agencies came out and suddenly named a typhoon a, that was going towards, it hit Japan, typhoon Nan Madal. And they did this just a few days after you did your video on Nan Madal. Go look up the Japan Nan Madal hurricane. It just hit this past year, and they named it Nan Madal. Hey, right, yo, yo, yo. Uh, so we have to have a Nan Madal episode. Uh -oh. And oh, I anchor want one, but the Nan Madal one, especially because it looks like uh, they just recognize this little tiny star fort area of it as being insanely old, man-made uh, island out of the sea. Megalithic basalt created it, very ancient. But in reality, the entire uh, massive island of it all, most of it covered by like lost runes, but like um, uh, forests now. But uh, the entire structure is probably uh, created artificially or something like, you know, somehow like on this mega giant scale it's like it's it's insane uh, the more you look at it and that i, I uh, can confidently confidently tell you and your viewers if you go open up a copy of google earth or any other map and go type in micronesia and look at it you will see that micronesia is a giant pentagon it's indisputable i had skeptics show up and say it was just natural but then you have nan made all on the east side and it's made up of hexagonal basalt. And it's in the shape of a pentagon. And it can't be because it's just to the north of there, guess what we did? The United States came in and did the Bikini Atoll nuclear tests on all those other atolls all the way around Micronesia, the Marshall Islands and so forth. We nuked the shit out of, part of my language, we nuked the hell out of all those other islands going just to the northeast of Micronesia. That's where we did all of our nuclear tests. Just by chance, right? Sorry, guys. It's just I get it, I get fired up about it because they made it. You're, you're repeating the, like, this knowledge you're discussing. How many times they've destroyed these ancient sites that are like just next level? We can't even comprehend them, yet alone build them right now. And that it's like, oh, actually, when we nuke something, that's what we destroyed. Oh, uh, when then there's the Korean. Uh, War Vietnam War actually they bombed uh Burma and like these crazy pyramids and these jars and like freaking bowls that are ten times the size of like a house uh made for giants, all sorts of crazy stuff. 
all over. We never see it. They just destroy it. Russia and... just did it. Russia just invaded. The, you guys have all seen the old maps. Where is Tartaria listed on most of the old maps, guys? It's north of the Black Sea. And we know what's north Tartaria. of the Black Sea. That's where... Yeah, yeah, little Tartaria Crimea. starts at Crimea, essentially. Events of the my category here. And then this is Luke the... can... Thank you. Right, okay. I've, all right. Is, is my volume okay, by the way? Because someone commented saying it was low. And, uh... Yes, sir, it is. Right, sweet. So, yeah, yeah. So, I've, I've done quite a bit of research into the old history of Tartaria and the way that it expands. So... If, if anything, I'm probably the guy to ask about, about this. So what you've got, what it seems, is there's three regions. So first in the northeast is where we were talking about yesterday. We've got the Prester John, who is seemingly a Christian. So this is a Christian nation in the northeast of Siberia-ish region above China. And they were apparently settled from 1290 AD as a Christian nation. And they were the ones who were oppressing Genghis Khan's people. So Genghis Khan rose up against Prester John, took over this whole empire, and that is how Genghis Khan first came to power. So Muscovy is a separate power that is part of this empire. Now, it seems to be interchangeable. Sometimes Muscovy takes over, sometimes Tartary takes over. We know that Tamerlane in the 13th to 1400s, so this guy was the general, so he wasn't the emperor yet but he was the next in line he was the general that was fighting all the the battles for the grand sham we know that he was attacked by muscovy and they attacked astrakhan and kazan so we know that those places which are now settled firmly in russia kazan is tartarstan so you can you can learn about that if you, if you want to go down there so they they've they've retained some of their tartarian heritage but the point being that Muscovy, which is what we know as Russia today, they have taken over all these lands that used to be Tartarian and have pushed them under the Russian Empire and basically said this is one thing, Where, whereas history will tell you that this has been controlled by Tamerlane in the 13 to 1400s, with his empire being at Samarkand, which is just a bit south of where this map's pointing. You know, you've got the the Tartarians that took over the Chinese Empire in 1644, just after the Qing Dynasty. And, and again, they've been written out of history. You've got the the Kazaki Tataris that apparently fought Ishmael in 700 AD, and they've been written out of history. You've got the Crimean Khanate that took place in a battle about 1739 against both the Muscovy Russians and also the Ottomans, and they've been written out of history. It's nuts. But if you do look for these things, you'll find these small Wikipedia articles. For example, you'll find the Crimean Khanate is listed as this it's tiny uh, force that was in that battle. That I just said 1739, I think. Um, and if, if you go into that, you realize that that was actually Little Tartary. That was the, the lesser Tartarians fighting during this war. So they've been written out at every level it's not just russia it's global so they have been written out of our history that Sorry. is indisputable it's absolutely indisputable that they have, that there is and was a global or at least seafaring civilization that was at least modeled around tartaria which is on the map, and it, my, I've even shared it with my viewers, so this shouldn't be controversial for anybody to talk about. Um, found an auction house map for, I want to say it was $84,000 right. for an auction. Area right here that is Tartaria. You see it's from, this is the uh, Caspian Sea, and uh, you got northeast, uh, what was is now Siberia, uh, and the north uh Siberian uh, Arctic Ocean and going into the Barents Sea over here, uh, this whole area, and that this was one what seems like a reprint, so like basic um, mid 50 uh, explanation where the coast is off and everything, but it actually has really fascinating. Um, you know names. what? One thing. 
but uh, uh, but I'll let you the... take over the name parts here, Luke. Right. What was it? Well, I won't get into names because I don't have the uh, I don't have the um, translations here. Me, but something that Dutch said there about the Vikings is in seafaring. You didn't say Vikings, but you made me think of the Vikings, right? Seafaring. We know the Vikings apparently went to America. We etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, okay. What do we think of a Viking as? Just just picture what you think of. Well, you think of a blonde-haired, blue-eyed giant, right? And you go, hmm, it sounds a little bit like an Aryan, doesn't it, right? So we go back to that map we saw yesterday when we were talking about it. We saw that thing about the Danites being called the Danes of the Dark North. The Danes of the Dark North. And the Danites apparently went to Ireland. Now they're associated again with the Vikings. So what we've got to start realizing is that the Vikings, the Aryans, because think about the blue hair, blue eyes, Aryans, Tartarians, Barbarians, Hung Aryans, Bulg Aryans. This is where it's coming from. There is a huge connection. This seafaring nation of the Vikings is actually the remnants of this Tartarian Empire, which is also the tribes of Israel. So if we go to the Danites, they were expelled from this area in the north. The Danites were expelled and they went, they left. And the Danites, the Danes, the, the, the Vikings, it's right there. It's literally in the name and you don't realize it. And then you go, oh, wait, but the Aryans are blonde hair, blue eyes, and are supposed to be a, a perfect race. Oh, shit, the Aryans, the Barbarians, the Tartarians. And that's where it comes from. It's right under our noses this whole time. Oh, I agree. You know, there's there's actually, um, and that they, believe it or not, in the Bible they... of all places, guys, in the Bible, there's um, talk about the Galatians. Do you guys know about the Galatians? No, no, tell us. Oh, man. Okay. Um, Please tell Paul the story. writes a letter in the Bible to, to Galatia. And it's to the church at Galatia telling them the rules and how they've either broke them or kept them. And basically, I, I got a wild hair up my ass and decided to go look up the history on the Galatians. And it turns out the Galatians were a red-haired people. Galatia was in Turkey. Okay. And they were a red-haired, freckled people. People had freckles. They didn't call it freckles at that time. They call it blemished. But a, a red-haired, blemished people that were all in, they were tall. They were known for being extremely tall. And now get this, the Galatian people had moved down to Turkey in somewhere uh, pre-Rome time. So, I, so this is a, you know, standard time frame, right? But pre-Rome time, the Galatians came from Ireland and settled down in the Turkey area. And the red hair thing, and the tall people, and, and they were, uh, they said they were seafaring. This is now in the legend, and that they also spread out other places, which then, of course, fits with every other right, continent right, around right. the world. Um, so, Turkey, this is weird because so Turkey is just above Assyria, right? So, if you take Assyria, which is the old name for Britain was called Albany or Albion at one point. So that name comes from in 1650 BC, an Assyrian king decided to fucking leave Assyria and go mm. sail somewhere else. And he went to Britain, which is why they named the place after him. But if you go into mythology, Albion was actually a giant whose corpse is Britain itself. Like he died and we're living on his back. Right. So you take the two things into, you know, it, with a pinch of salt and you mix them together Perhaps, like you say, if the if Turkey was covered by these ginger giants, perhaps Assyria was also, and perhaps he's the person that's gone over to Britain yeah, to create this race of giants. Again, if you look at Gog Magog, who is the apparent last giant to be killed in Britain by Brutus when he arrived there, Welsh folklore will show you that Britain was previously inhabited by giants. Well, you'll see that he's depicted as a ginger, tall-haired, Pictish man, Picts resembling Tartarians, but he's a giant ginger man who is killed before uh, humans can move into Britain. So don't you think that connection between Turkey apparently being inhabited by tall ginger people, then Assyria, just below Asia Minor, which was Turkey at the time, you know, apparently has Albion who comes over 
with giants and then Gog Magog, one of his descendants, is killed and he's a tall ginger giant. We, we cannot overlook that. You're on to something huge here, guys. This is all live. Just so you know, this is not scripted. So we're kind of going down a little rabbit hole here that I think needs to be go down. Check it out. Do you guys know the Uyghur conspiracy from China? The Uyghur people? I'm not about this? Improv. We are 50 minutes in. Huh. Wow, that went by quick. A five minute so, thing. I wow, thought. that went quick. God, wow. <laughs> Just a little, little pretext. Great. One hour, we're almost one hour in when we were supposed to do five minutes. Uh, two, three <laughs> legends, because Bert and Ernie are famous. And then we have the unbelievably amazing and the ma mainstream media tries to slander you like no other dutch and it's just insane when you know uh, those you know you the clips like bbc uh so italian like ladies being like oh he gave us the warning we were able to sleep in the cars he saved us and then they like <laughs> literally exchange people vindifying you from the internet cut your internet your power the p literal power to your place 112 time today like well like, well, it's just it's well, insane and like I, it's I'm, because I'm, you've discovered yeah. this code cycle it's been insane the 112 power outages i have witnesses and technicians even now who are willing to testify in court it's crazy it, i stepped all over all kinds of toes i stepped over I turned down a Halliburton sponsorship. You guys might not know about this story, but I all kinds of stuff, man. All kinds. Of, I, we'll we'll go down that road too about what what I turned down, and what happened to me because of it. What what's what's in the world of geophysics and geology that's total bullshit? Which is pretty much everything now that I'm finding. That's what they didn't want me to find. Um, yeah. But no, real quick, real quick before I forget, th this red hair thing, man. Okay, the Uyghur people conspiracy, the China conspiracy. Why are they running? Why this is not me, guys. Just so you know, I didn't come up with this. I saw several videos on it, and it's about the heritage of the Uyghur people, and that the Chinese are rounding them up for some kind of breeding I, I project. Ergers, I, I just sorry. Yeah, no, I get what you're talking about. Sorry, yeah. Ergers. Yeah, see, I'm sorry yeah. if I'm mispronouncing it. it uh, yeah, no, no, it, you're it, not mispronouncing it. It's just a language difference. But I was sat here like the Ouija people, and I was like, oh, the fucking Ergers. Yeah, no, no yeah, no. the Ergers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they're get this. They're all red hair, blue eyed. No. And they, yeah, 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 yeah. And they all come from Turkey oh, originally. No, no, you're right, for real. This this has got to be it. It's, and China's got to be getting them for genetics. It's got to be they're trying to get that elongated skull. Right, right? In England, you've got Irish people. They'll like it's just a bit of a stereotype, a racist stereotype that they'll be ginger in it, right? The Danites left uh, Serbia and fucking came over to to Ireland, and they're the people connected to the tribes of Israel. Do you know what I mean? They're the same Urgers, so of course they'd be ginger. Well, it just makes sense, doesn't it? Definitely, definitely. It's it's red hair, blue eye, or green eye. Oh, and, and you, like you'd be really interested in this stuff that like I've got. So there's an old historian that unfortunately, you know, he's he's getting on a bit now. He's you know he's uh, in his eight, late eighties, nineties, but he unearthed all this shit to do with King Arthur and how he went over to America and stuff. And he's one of his brothers is called Prince Maddock. He went over to Mobile Bay. Now, if you if you search up Mobile Bay. You will find a monument to Prince Maddie, but they have misdated it to 1170, but it's actually 570-ish that he should have been there. But the point being that is, it says that, you know, this guy came over and he left behind with the Indians, the Welsh language. Now, if you go to Welsh Chronicles, they depict meeting ginger Indians that could already speak Welsh. Yes, that's here in Missouri. And those Indian people are said to be the mound builders that they had. They supposedly had a civilization that went all the way up to the Great Lakes, they told us. And but, you know, you're absolutely right. This this red hair thing can't be overlooked because it would be a evidence of a global traveling all the way from central Russia or China all the way over to the United States. The only thing missing would be South America to have the red haired people. Oh, we know we got the, the mound building culture. Oh, that red-haired people. 
and often a second row of teeth as well, or a six finger or toe with the, these, like uh, the red haired giants at Gino to general. Just got to right. put that fact you, out right. there you that uh, Attic it it in. The, it's really funny because I remember when I had one of my awakenings, um, like, so. You, I've always been one of these people that laughs when you watch South Park, you know how there's the whole um, Jewish kind of, uh, you know, laugh at the Jews kind of thing. I've always been like, just, just laugh along with that. I never, I've never considered that Judaism might be like the way. So when I. Oh, said... oh sorry. It's the connection has gone a bit. Oh, I lost you a bit there. What did you Key, say, bro? Keyword, keywords get mentioned and things get shut down. Oh, shit. Oh, right. <laughs> right? right. Every time. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, one hour in, um, uh, we got nobody has joined, not Paul, not Campbell, not Zertis. Uh, this has been excellent for so far. Uh, we got a future full plan with Paul Cook, Campbell, uh, Zertis, Dutch, and welcome back, of course, uh, on the 14th Valentine's Day date, uh, where we'll be able to be pre-organized with the references to go further in depth with a lot of what we've been explaining so far. Um, pretty funny, Luke, ancient historia. You're like, Bernie, how are you up already? No, it's, I haven't slept yet. And I am now on, uh, probably hours of streaming straight. So it's like, I definitely am long past my bedtime. It's noon, uh, into the next day. Uh, I did, uh, with, there's just so many, so many good things going on. Uh, aren't we supposed to be doing I'm another gonna let hours you guys go on what i said are we, we could go on doing... all day if yeah, you I'll really see. want to because eventually what we're gonna be doing me and dutch were talking ahead of time and dutch do you have your twitch on you or can you be on your twitch and currently log on to my twitch which we are also currently live on which i should post the link in the live chat for everybody and the uh private chat for you and that this is going to be a key part of integrating going forward is uh, running twitch streams they'll be featuring like a multicast mixture of like some of the science experiments in the corner All right, there we go. Not open double mic. Uh, okay, do we got we got the Twitch? Here we go. Posting it, then closing it. But you should maybe not open it and then have that same thing happen. Now that I think about it, Dutch. Anyways, next time we'll be integrating all the Twitches and we'll be starting and keeping things running for multiple hours on Twitch ahead of time, like you already do have running on your Twitch or do you want to share your Twitch or show what you're doing on Twitch and how we're going to just do probably what I'll do is um, on it all. Oh, I, I'll probably be doing when you're like showing, for instance, just so people know what we're talking about um, when he's doing like a live experiment that's running for 12 hours and I've got my 24 hour earthquake stream running. I want to put his live stream in the lower right hand corner of my thing that you can click on or follow a link to where you can click over and watch his live stream and so forth. And then when they're all doing stuff, it can appear on mine and mine can appear on theirs. And it, it, if we want We're to, okay. I mean, it doesn't have to always be there, but yeah, it yeah, would just exactly. be something gonna we can be do together if we want. It's pretty cool. Experimenting, connecting the stream yard to the stream labs and running on the, tw the different Twitches, integrating them and trying to create some sort of like, uh, Original weekend at Bernie's 48 hour where you got like 24 stream channels broadcasting two hours worth of stuff. And then like uh, crypto news every on the top of the hour, the half hour, the 
uh, weather, the forecasting, the um, cycle. Uh, well, I, I foresee that this could um, be used, for instance, like when an earthquake strikes and I show it live and I zoom in, like what I did in California a couple of weeks ago, and we find a star fort with a satellite array and a recycling center built inside of the star fort directly in the center. And there's been an earthquake.